most people think that genetics means like whatever whatever your genetic code says is what's gonna happen. So for instance, like, okay, all these people in my family had diabetes means I'm gonna get diabetes, right? What epigenetics says, what epi means on top of, what epigenetics says is that you could be predisposed to something to happen like diabetes, but it has to be your choice or your environment that truly turns that genetic code on. Welcome to the Miracle Academy podcast. I'm your host, Scotty Cooper. Today, I, on this episode, I wanted to do something a little bit different. For those that know me pretty well, they know that I wasn't much of a reader for a long time. I really hated reading. Like, even in school, I would ask just like, can we just watch the movie? Like, I really don't want to read this. And uh, until recently, probably a few years ago, my friend Dr. Moses that, that's in our office, he and I are just like super competitive about everything. And he and I were trying to say like, let's see who can read more. Let's see who can, who can get more books done in a year. And of course, he and I just using our competitive edge felt the need to compete with this. Um, I obviously won. And what I want to do today is start to review some of the books I've read. So this is going to be the first episode we do this. I'm starting with my favorite book. So this book is Becoming Supernatural by Dr. Joe Dispenza. For those of you that don't know, Dr. Joe Dispenza, he's a doctor that was in this kind of crazy accident and he fractured parts of his spine and he basically was told he was never gonna walk again. So he had to figure something out to be able to heal. And he turned to meditation to, to heal. And he had this amazing recovery and amazing transformation that he decided he wanted to do this for more people. So from that, he started to study more neuroscience. He's written a lot of books that are very um, elevated with its science. And it's kind of difficult to read if you're a lay person. But this book, Becoming Supernatural, is written for the common person. And um, so I like it because I can understand it better. For someone that wants to get into meditation or is looking for another way to heal, this is a great book. I highly recommend reading it. But what I wanted to do today is kind of take you through what I learned from it and what I've been able to grasp and just to get my perspective on it. So let's dive in. So kind of overall, the biggest part I learned from this book was how, how many limitations I was putting on myself, right? I felt like there were so many limits that I hadn't even realized were there until I intentionally thought about everything that limits me. I heard a quote from like some video I watched where the guy said, you know, what limits the amount of grass in a park and I was thinking about it and I'm like I'm not sure and then he said the amount of space you give it so the thing is, is that if you have like a concrete walkway or you've got this little area that you you put in or let's say like looking on behind me you know there's like a little area that there's grass and there's something that that encapsulates it only the amount of grass that's given that space can grow in that area and that was really powerful because I realized, okay, that happens with the rest of my life. And this book kind of helped me realize that. So um, that's kind of the first part. But I'm just going to go through each chapter and kind of just show you what I, what I like from each part. So the first part is the, the present moment. And this was something that has been really big for me and also explaining it to different practice members or my friends or my family. But... The visual I want you to imagine is imagine that, you know, there's, there's you like a little stick figure and then below you, there's all these little tick marks like this. Okay. And if your focus is on the past, thinking about things that have happened before, these tick marks are taken up by thoughts of the past. And then if you're constantly thinking about the future and you're not thinking of the present, it's constantly over here on this other little tick mark. So basically, if you've got all this bandwidth or battery you could use, this amount's taken for your past, and this amount's taken for your future, and this is what you've got for the present moment. So the way I would think of this would be like, imagine you have your phone, and 
you're on this really important FaceTime call. But for some reason, you're also streaming Spotify, you're playing Words with Friends, you're also playing Candy Crush, and you are also on Facebook Messenger, you're on WhatsApp, you're on all your apps are open while you're trying to FaceTime. There's not much energy you can use for that amount of time. Eventually, it's, your battery's gonna run out. And that's what a lot of people do. A lot of people are spending all their battery on this past that doesn't matter or this future that doesn't matter. So for me, thinking of that and wanting to have more of my time in the present moment, so instead of it just being like this, I use all of this for my present, that was really helpful for me. And that's kind of what I took from this chapter. The other parts that I really liked, so there's kind of like a little, little graphic on there. You can see what we can, we can put up. The other parts of this chapter that I liked is how different emotions have different energies, right? So all emotion is energy. So one of the things that they talk about in this book is how things that are very low vibrational, so things like lust or pain or victimization are very slow moving energies and kind of like bog you down, right? When you think of people that have these feelings a lot, they kind of, I don't want to say a downer, but that's really what it feels like. And so in this book, it kind of explains how these higher vibrational energies like bliss or freedom or love or joy, they move faster and they carry more information within that energy, which I really liked. The other thing that's really cool in this chapter, talking about epigenetics. And this is a thing we talk a lot about in our practice. Most people think that genetics means like whatever, whatever your genetic code says is what's going to happen. So for instance, like, okay, all of these people in my family had diabetes means I'm going to get diabetes, right? What epigenetics says, what epi means on top of, what epigenetics says is that you could be predisposed to something to happen like diabetes, but it has to be your choice or your environment that truly turns that genetic code on. The way I would think of it is imagine you've got a house and in this house, you've got a little doorway and there's these steps. And at the bottom of the doorway, it says diabetes. So say my house has this, but maybe you're watching this and maybe someone, people in your family, it's more like cancer or like heart condition. So let's say in your house, you've got this door and you've got these steps down, it says heart, heart issues. The thing is, you've got to be able to take all those steps down to arrive at that thing, at that whatever's in your house. So for instance, in my house, let's say it's diabetes. You could get pushed down that, but every one of these steps is either a choice you make. So it's either like, okay, I decide to eat McDonald's every day, or I don't exercise, or I don't have a good relationship with anyone around me, or I don't take any time for myself, or I'm living a purposeless life, all those kind of things make you take these steps down, and before you know it, you could be in this, in this door. Now, there's some instances where it's not a choice. It could be like, okay, you lived next to a factory growing up, and there's these chemicals that got into your body that made you fall down the stairs. But what this talks about is the fact that you have the capability to turn genes off by thought alone. So what that means is you can start taking steps back up, leaving whatever that thing is behind you. And that was one of the most powerful things I've ever heard. Cause it was like, wow, so I actually have a choice in my life. Just because everyone in my family had this specific problem doesn't mean that I have to have it. So that alone was like transformational and something that we talk about all the time. The next part I really like in here is that where your attention goes, your energy flows. So well, I've talked about this on other episodes, but when you are focused on something, that's where your attention goes. It's where your energy goes to. So the example I used last time was if you're thinking about buying a Tesla and then when you're driving, every car you see is a Tesla because that's where your attention is. And you find your conversations going towards that way and you finding everything about your life pointing to that. So I think with the present moment, not enough people live in the present. And the other part that when I first read this book, it was before I was married and I was really excited about being married and everything in my life revolved around that. 
And I found myself every day someone would talk to me. I would tell them, oh, I can't wait till, till I get married. Can't wait. And what I found was I wasted this period of time in my life that I should have been enjoying and living in the present because I was so focused on the future that I completely missed a year of my life. And I realized that I'm never going to do that again. I'm going to live in the present from now on. So even if I have something really exciting happening, I'm going to remain in the present. So now if you talk to me and you'll never hear me say like, well, I can't wait for that. What you'll hear me say is I'm excited for that. So I am, I am excited, but I can wait now. I can live every day like it's an amazing, amazing accomplishment, an amazing, spectacular day. And that's what I do every day now. But it came from that experience of like, wow, I'm wasting years of my life because I'm so excited for this one event, which was spectacular, but I need to be able to live in the moment and see all the blessings and amazing things that happen every day. So the next chapter is uh, tuning into new potentials in the quantum field. So what I really learned from this part and what, from this book too, was that kind of thinking from a physics standpoint, currently in our current understanding, anything that moves faster than the speed of light is no longer matter, but energy. So when you listen to Einstein's like E equals MC squared, and we know that, that about energy and matter, what we find out is that there's this, this cutoff point called the nexus of quantum, which is the speed of light. So anything below the speed of light has physical matter. Anything that's above it is energy. So humans and light are very similar in the fact that we are both matter and energy. It's very interesting. So a light is both particle and wave. It's one of the only things that's like that other than us. And so for people that are more spiritual, you would think that this is your soul versus your body. That's what I identify with, that kind of understanding. And in this quantum field of energy, where this exists is basically past that nexus of quantum. So where it's only energy exists. So for me, I think of it as like, this is where your soul exists, or this is where just frequency and and all of that exists. There's no matter that can, that can exist in this place. And when you meditate, what you really want to do is to get to this place. And I've kind of, taking the things I learned from this book, I kind of created it my own method, my own methodology, and this is what I've taught to all the people sitting behind the camera right now, and to a lot of people, my family, you know, my grandparents, everyone that wants to learn about it. And this is kind of the methodology I think through. So the first thing you do is you close your eyes, you sit up straight. And this is a good thing, you can just close your eyes or you could look at the really cool graphics behind me. But you close your eyes, you take a deep breath, you sit up straight. You normally don't want to do this in bed because you'll fall asleep because you're programmed to fall asleep when you go to bed. You close your eyes and what you imagine is you imagine that you're in space and you're looking at the earth, the moon, the stars, and what I like to imagine is like the International Space Station. And let's say that we're outside of it and we're kind of like doing some work on, on uh, a part outside of it. So we've got a space suit on, we're tethered to the space station, but we're doing some work on the outside of our ship. Okay, so just imagine this for us. The next part is once we've once we've got that in our mind's eye, and the thing is, is that when we're thinking of this, realize that thoughts are real things. So yes, you're imagining it, but yes, it is real. You have your eyes closed still. And then the first thing you do is you kind of think of like the movie Iron Man, when he's got the, the computer Jarvis, where he can swipe things away and move it around. You swipe away the earth, so now you've got the moon, you've got the space station, and you've got all the stars around us. Then we swipe away the moon. Then, once you're there, you swipe away the space station. So now all we're left with is, is your body and your spacesuit and all the stars. So then let's swipe away all the stars. So now it's just the blackness of space, and you're just kind of floating there in your spacesuit. Then we swipe away the spacesuit, then we swipe away your body and all that's left, what I like to imagine is like this 
almost like a blue energy ball looking thing. And when I look at it, you can't tell that it has anything to do with me. You can't say that, okay, it's a really attractive looking guy that's really smart and funny and really um, humble. <laughs> and, uh, but you, you can't tell any characteristics about me, but you could just know that that energy is just the essence of me. Like you can, you can feel it, you know that that's Scotty. So that's what you have to imagine, just that energy ball and this blackness of space. If you can get to that point, that's how I kind of imagine the quantum field of energy. Once you can get to that place is where you can do a lot of really incredible, cool healing and different things. And, you know, eventually we'll get deeper into that. But that's kind of the first step is if you could get to that. So I learned portions of that from this book, but then I kind of came up with that, that methodology of it. And people will find different ways to do it, but that's what I've seen seems to help a lot of people. The thing is now I can get to that space really quickly because I've done it so many times. But in this book, what they talk about is if you really want to use the quantum field, and, and then when I say quantum field, so this is kind of a thing in physics, but to people that are more spiritual or religious, you know, for me, coming from my background, I think that this is kind of like what the Holy Spirit is, is this, this place of where you ask and you shall receive kind of idea. But nonetheless, what they talk about is to, to manifest something or to get something, you have to have a clear intention with an elevated emotion. Right? And you've heard me say this so many times, and I'm going to keep saying it <laughs> so you can really get it. But if there's something that you want, what you're going to do is you're going to take out a piece of paper and you're going to write out all the things you want. So let's say that the thing is we're looking for a new career. So it's very interesting was the night before this was recorded, I actually did this with my sister. It just, she decided she wanted a, a new career, and this is exactly what we did. What you do is you write down all the things that you want from whatever the thing is we're trying to find. So for instance, with her, it was a career. She wanted somewhere that she could feel like she had autonomy. She wanted to get paid more than she was currently. She wanted to be able to be creative. She wanted to be able to help people. And she wanted to be able to, um, to do things with outside or plants. It's what she wanted. So I said, okay, great, write it all down. So she made the list of all the things she wanted. So we made a C for career, and we wrote down our list. Then we talked about what is it gonna feel like once you have this career? So things like elation came up, or um, happiness, or like a sense of awe, or a sense of like content, or kind of like, ah, like that kind of feeling. So she wrote all those down gratefulness and what you do is you write so you write a c for career or whatever the thing is you want whether it's a relationship because they are or whatever it is and you draw a little squiggly line around it and you put kind of like beams of light coming around it so in your meditation once you get to that place of the quantum you close your eyes and you see that kind of energy ball and you kind of move it away and now what you put is you put that that c with the squiggly line and you imagine just light coming to it. And the feelings that she's supposed to feel is all those feelings she wrote down. We know that the things that she listed on the left are all the things that represent that career, but she's just supposed to, so she just knows that C represents those, and then the feeling is what brings it to her. And this is what she's doing, and I know she's done it before, because she, uh, when she won uh, a national pageant, this is what she would do every day. And um, if you want to watch my other episode where she talks about that, it's really powerful, very entertaining episode as well. So you can click on it here and you can watch that. The other part I like about kind of quantum physics, it's a little bit different than Newtonian physics, as Newtonian physics is very much like, if you wanted to drive from here to San Diego from point A to point B, it takes you a certain amount of time for you to move through a certain amount of space, right? That's kind of our understanding of Newtonian physics. Quantum physics doesn't operate like that. Quantum physics is very different. So if you remember from science class in high school, if you remember, you know, we've got the protons and the neutrons, and you've got this electron cloud around it. I don't know if you kind of remember that at all. 
what they found, what these scientists found was that wherever they looked in the electron cloud, the electron would show up. So if they're looking in this place and they're looking right here, the electron will show up in that spot every single time. And they thought that was weird. They're like, oh, well, this is where the electron is. But then they look away and they can't find it. But then they look over here and it shows up over here. So this kind of had to shift their understanding a little bit. Like, how does this work? And they found that the observer is affecting the observed and the quantum field or the uh, quantum physics and this, this Newtonian physics couldn't really explain this. And what they talk about in this book is how quantum physics is less about point A to point B, but more how that electron idea worked. So what really happened with the electron is that all the space in that cloud collapsed to that one area. So say we're looking right here for the electron, all of this space collapsed to this point. So this was the only place it could have been. So basically it would be kind of like if you had like a pool of water and you took the water out and you put it in a bucket and you got rid of the pool, like, okay, the water could only exist in this bucket anymore. It can't exist over here because that's not there anymore. That's kind of the idea, if that makes sense. So this is where they looked, all space collapsed to that point. And that's kind of the understanding of quantum physics. So what they found was that you could do this in your life if you're able to tune into it correctly. You could basically collapse the space between two points. So instead of me driving to San Diego, point A to point B, these two things are together. I'm now immediately in San Diego and the, the space between it now no longer exists. That's kind of the understanding of this. How you can do this in your life is pretty incredible. And that's kind of the whole point of manifestation is you're bringing that point, you're collapsing the space between it so it comes to you. And that was pretty profound when I really grasped that. And it took me a while and it took me some visuals to kind of see that. And that's really what I took from this book as well. The next chapter I really liked is the blessing of the energy centers. So this one is the one that I really go over a lot with a lot of our practice members and friends and family. And it was a thing I really didn't align with for a long time. I, for a while, didn't really understand like the word chakras and I kind of shied away from it because I didn't really understand the science behind it. And really what a, an energy center is, is in sense a chakra, but then more scientifically, it's the um, ganglions that come out and are kind of like these different areas that are kind of like mini brains that come out from the spine. There's like the little nerves that come out and then you've got this little area that the nerves come into and then separate out. So once I realized that all these little areas align, it made it a lot easier for me to really grasp it and then I was good with it from then on. Nonetheless, there's energy centers that are within the body and each one kind of does a different thing. But in this meditation of blessing of the energy centers, it teaches you how to be able to take each one and kind of go up. Basically, it's like pulling a straw up through each center and kind of cleaning each one out. So that's one of the meditations I do pretty regularly is I close my eyes and sitting up straight. And, you know, if you look at this book, it'll show you the pictures of like what these where these are. And I kind of imagine them as like a, a ball that kind of fills up, you know, for me, I've played a lot of video games. So I imagine it kind of like a, um, like your health meter filling up. So I can imagine my first one going up and I'm grateful for it. I'm saying like, I, I love it. Thank you so much for everything you do. Then I go up to my next one and my next one. And so I'm just imagining each of these filling up. And then once it fills all the way up to the top, then it can come out like anything that was bad can come out and, and be disposed of. But now like everything is, is flowing like it's supposed to. And I really enjoyed learning about that and how energy can get stuck in different, different centers. So basically like each center would correlate to a different emotion, but also different body parts as well. The next part of this chapter I really liked too was talking about the electromagnetic field and how with a lot of these experiments they did, they were able to find how people with a low vibration or like a low electromagnetic field that they could actually measure, the people with a low field 
a lot of times would end up with different illnesses. And uh, that was pretty crazy to me. And I, it took me a while to understand that. But once I really grasped it, it was uh, pretty powerful. The next part I really liked too was just talking about how like the brain worked and how, you know, you're, you're using one part of your brain to constantly see like, is this good or bad kind of stuff and not really, not really taking in everything. But then you have this other part of your brain that just takes in absolutely everything and how a lot of your daily life, you're programmed to think certain ways and to do certain things. It makes sense. Like you watch a commercial, normally like a phar pharmaceutical company will have a, a commercial where something's kind of shocking at first. It says something like something that shocks you. It's like, whoa. But what you don't realize when that happens, the next line is typically speaking straight to your subconscious or the thing within you that just absorbs everything. And that is kind of crazy to me once I really learned that. But then in this book, it teaches you how you can then reprogram, like you can program yourself in a positive manner. So instead of programming you to think that you need a certain medication or that your hair is not good enough or that this special makeup is the thing that's gonna make your life a thousand times better, that in actuality, you are enough, your hair does look amazing, your skin is vibrant, but like you can program yourself to think that if you just do it, not in the way of scaring yourself like those commercials do, then there's a different technique to do it. But that was another thing that my wife and I do all the time is we watch it, we made a what's called a mind movie where you basically are programming yourself very positively. So like on her mind movie, it has, um, has a lot of little funny things and cutesy stuff, but then it's also like different goals we have for, uh, for ourselves and things that we really want to be able to um, accomplish in our lives. So the, the next parts of the book um, get really deep and I, I really enjoy it. You know, it talks about the pineal gland, which is um, in the brain and it can create different, different chemicals and how when you, with specific types of meditation, you can basically activate the pineal gland and that for people that are looking for more of the mystical kind of things or they're looking for a mystical experience a lot of it originates there in the pineal gland and different um, religions and cultures talk about the importance of it it looks like a little pine cone so what's interesting is in a lot of architecture especially in churches and mosques and synagogues you'll see a little pine cone and always what's weird to me is like why is there a pine cone in church but it's just interesting to me that the pineal gland looks like a pine cone and it's all over a lot of different civilizations but it talks about how there's the different chemicals that can come out of the pineal gland when it's activated and how it can create that mystical experience and people that have had these amazing things happen to them a lot of them have have used that and you know eventually when they all kind of get into some of the crazy mystical experiences I've had with it but, um, but we're not quite there yet but I will share that at some point kind of in closing with the book what Dr. Joe really wanted to do is make the world better and be able to have more people be on this higher vibrational plane and how you use your frequency and you you know are connecting to your true self to be able to um, make the world better and how you know we want to raise the frequency of the earth and all those kind of things and so when I went to I, I read this book and then I went to his um, advanced retreat and um, after a lot of training and it was pretty cool to be able to see people healing from these crazy conditions just by thought alone and how your thoughts create your feelings, and your feelings create your personal reality. And your personal reality creates your personality. And your personality creates more thought. And so basically it's this cycle. And the thing is that if you just change your thoughts alone, they could change your feelings, which could change your personal reality, which could change your personality and change everything for you. And that was the thing that really happened with me is that I started to change my thoughts. I let go of a lot of the this, this self-limiting beliefs 
And now I've been able to accomplish a lot more than I ever thought I could. And now, like, there's so much that, that I know I can do, and life's exciting now. Because, like, there's nothing that can hold me back. I can do whatever I want. I can accomplish anything I want. And I just had to have that mind shift to be able to change my thoughts, which changed my feelings, changed my personal reality, changed my personality, and now, now it's all different. So I would highly recommend reading this. Um, let me know in the comments if you kind of liked how, how we did this, or if you have any more specific questions for me that are like, hey, what did you take out of this chapter specifically, or anything, any comments, or anything that you want to know about. I've recommended this book to a lot of people, and I I've, I've, can talk for hours about it. So uh, if you have any questions, you can always DM me and we can have a conversation. But thank you so much for, for watching this episode of the Miracle Academy. You know, I'm Scotty Cooper, and this is where Miracles are expected. Thanks.